Have you ever spent months building an app only to get crickets on launch day? Yeah, me too, but after shipping three React Native apps lately, I've learned some lessons the hard way, so you don't have to. Hey React Native friends, what's up? Simon here from Galaxies.dev. Today, we're diving into the real, unfiltered truth about what it takes to ship React Native app. Not just the coding part, the whole journey from idea to app store success. I'll be honest, I haven't cracked the magic app store code, but I spent way more time on things that I shouldn't have done or should have done so much faster. I want I want to give you my insights and keep sharing my learnings throughout this year as I keep building more of these small personal apps, both for fun and also for training my shipping muscle. If you also plan to release a React Native app this year, check out my brand new Zero to Hero mission on galaxies.dev. This mission is divided into different modules to teach you everything from basics of Expo to building real world apps and submitting them to the app stores. It's really the one course that will help you go from idea to finished app while learning all the essentials of React Native. And before you take the course, watch out for these 10 lessons. First of all, you don't need a super unique idea. That's the mistake I made in the past. I was always thinking of, wow, how can I come up with something good? I don't have good ideas. Just take a more technical approach. So over the last months, my approach was to use a tool called Astro to do App Store uh, keyword research. So with this tool, I can enter any kind of keywords and I can see popular apps and I can also see how popular or how difficult those keywords are. So for example, this could be an interesting niche. It's like the what would you choose? It's sort of a game. And once your popularity is like somewhere between, let's say 20 and 50 and the difficulty is still below 50, like all these things could be potential keywords. And I then followed this up with a bit more research using Sensor Tower. And so this displays like the revenue. Then you could go like, what would you choose rather? And you can go into these apps and you can see, okay, 90K downloads and 10K revenue last month. Probably this is something I could tackle. And I know from all the videos I've watched that this always looks super easy, but trust me, I've spent days and weeks on this, just like going through keywords, looking at apps, finding something that actually fits the, I could rank for the keyword and this is actually generating revenue. But once you found something, it's actually pretty cool and good feeling. After I've got my initial idea, I usually go for something that I call the critical path. For every application, there's like one user story that is the most challenging. For example, I wanted to build this drag and drop editor uh, where I can like put tasks into different buckets. And I knew that, yeah, I can do data storage and all that fancy stuff and I can do overlays and I can do styling, but drag and drop with multiple views, that's gonna be challenging. I started with this one key feature and just tried to implement that critical path because when I know that I can develop exactly this feature, the rest of the way up will simply fall in place. And so I'd recommend really think about the application you wanna do, think about the MVP and figure out what is the most challenging part of this app and can it be done with React Native. Tip number three is to plan first and code later. And I think you can actually do like the critical path coding before this, but once you get the critical path, you should really make a stop and think. And that's the mistake I made as well. So last time I really went into like, okay, I wanna try this technology. Um, I think I wanna use legend state and I wanna have sync and stuff. And so for like multiple days or even weeks, I was working on legend state and honestly in the end, I just went to SQLite and ditched it all. And the same was true for multiple components in my application. Like I restructured them so many times, I lost really a lot of time on that. And you can really save time by just taking like one or two days off before you dive into the real coding after your critical path. Fletch out the MVP. Think about the features you really want to do that should be included in the first version and only once you have a really clear picture of the structure of your app, the libraries you want to use and the features, then you can begin to code. And this also nicely ties into learning number four, eliminate overkill. I've done so many cool things because I think they're cool, but they're completely a waste of time in the beginning. For example, you might say, oh, well, this is still required, but honestly, nobody cares if your application comes with dark mode in the beginning. It doesn't really matter. And the problem is that as a developer, I thought these things are kind of easy. I use native wind, so I just better get started and add dark mode everywhere. But 
it still takes a lot of time to set it up correctly and bug fix on all the different platforms and make sure it everywhere looks good and then I also set up like tainted icons because they were cool on iOS and before you notice it like you spend hours and hours on these tiny little things that sound really easy as a developer but ultimately they distract you from the goal of shipping your first application your first MVP version as soon as possible to your users and I know that this is actually not that easy that's easier said than done and I've made the mistake myself so this is why tip number five comes in really handy make plans for future versions that also really helped me to stay focused on the MVP so when you get like excited oh I found a keyword I found my niche I want to build this application you come up with like 10 different things that this application should include and it makes it great but you can't do all these things for the first MVP version or at least you shouldn't as a little tip just keep a lock of future versions. I've wrote this kind of detailed outline for like version 1.1, 1.2. I want to do at some point widgets in the application. I want to add some more pro features. I want to have a different tab and I want a localization. Like I could have integrated all these things in the first version, but I thought that, well, let's just get started with a basic version that had this essential functionality, which is for this task manager, like to put tasks into different lists, move them around, dive into a list and then see the details and like, like the basics of a task manager. But sketching out my features for future version helps me to stay sane, at the same time also keep up my momentum. I've noticed this before, after the initial 1.0 launch, I'm usually like, okay, I'm done, let's move on. If you have things you could do for 1.1, 1.2, you still keep up that excitement because it's still your project and there's still fire in you to develop new features for it. I definitely wanna get back into this as soon as possible and you see version 1.1 is already shipped and I'm happy to dive into witches very soon. Soon. Tip number five, which is more sort of like an encouragement, is that you don't have to be a designer to create a good looking application. There are great AI tools out there and also normal editing tools that will help you do a lot. So I really like to use Midjourney, although I didn't use like these designs for my app icon. I think I actually used one of those designs here uh, for the Matrix Manager. And as well, I was lately thinking about a game and it's great at coming up like with game assets once you get a hang of it and know how to uh, write the correct prompts. Additionally, I then also looked into Figma because in Figma you can find great designs for creating your app store assets. Honestly, uh, if my designer sees it, he will say like, oh Simon, you're so bad, it's so easy. But I have no idea how Figma works, but there are pretty cool uh, templates that you can use. You just drop in the screenshots of your application. So this is from one of the calorie tracker applications I had, or this was my text to speech. I used a slightly different template. There are just many templates here in Figma that you can use where you can create professionally looking screenshots or a previews for your application on the App Store. And this is unbelievable important because this is what users see on the App Store. Don't spend weeks on your application and then just like try to throw these screenshots together in half an hour so you can submit it. Take some time to craft a compelling UI, whether it is through Figma or like Canva or anything. You don't need a designer. Usually for these small side projects, you can get really far with AI and the free tools available. Now tip number seven is actually about coding. I want to give one tip. The other stuff is like, you can check out the videos on my channel on building React Native apps and uh, our mission on galaxies.dev if you want to build your own applications. But one specific tip that I also had to learn is debug in isolation. Now, the reason is simple. If you start a new side project, you're usually a bit more open to new technology and you're trying out things. So in my application, I was, for example, trying out Legend State because I thought it's really great. And by the way, it is really great. And I wanted to make it work with some sort of very specific scenario. I want to start offline and I want to be able at some point to sync this to Superbase. So like local first, but then also when the user is pro syncing and it just didn't work for me in my application. Ultimately, I started a new Expo app. I added legend state and I tried from the basics up and I noticed that oh legend state actually was never the problem it was my setup and my application and how I tried to fit it into my app so really if you're working with new technology in a new greenfield application debug in isolation you're gonna save a lot of time things might work in a completely blank application and you mix in like two three dependencies and suddenly it's not working and you will never discover what's the problem in the first place otherwise tip number eight is for all of you who probably haven't released an application yet and that's expect to be rejected 
I, so far, haven't achieved submitting my application to Apple or Google and get it through the review process in the first try. If I've never done it. I don't know why, it's just not working. There's always something that these people have to complain and sometimes that's actually right because I was a bit lazy, but that's a different story. So expect that your application might be rejected in the first try and that's not a big deal. You can always make a new build if you're using EAS in the cloud, if you're using EAS locally. It's not too hard to make a new build and just resubmit your application. You should just not go into this with the expectation, especially if you have like a deadline that, okay, on day X my application needs to be released because we have all this big marketing going on and I submitted like just five days before. Don't do that. Never do that. Take enough time for the release process, especially if it's the first version, but also for like major new versions. There will be things that the process discovers and sometimes, honestly, it's a bit random why they reject your application and then it can take quite some time to get on the same page with them and fix the things that might or might not work because they test in strange environments. But ultimately, I've learned actually a lot from the review. I usually by now know that I need to have a TOC and a privacy linked in the description of my App Store entry. I know how to set up my iOS App Store subscription elements and how to include them. I know which keys need to be present in the app JSON and which information needs to be on a specific screen. So you really get better and that's why you can train your shipping muscle by doing more. All right, tip number nine, build it and they will not come. You've probably heard that it's not as easy anymore as it was probably like 10 years ago to make a super popular application. There's like just the amount of applications on this store. You get super excited about this app and maybe your wife or husband or your mother or dad or whoever, but then it pretty much stops and nobody else cares about your tiny little application that you've been tinkering on over the last couple of weeks. You really can't expect that anyone will just suddenly dive into the app and throw money at you. That's just not going to happen. I'm actually pretty happy with this. Like I've got quite some impressions and product views. And when I see this, that I have impressions and product views, it's more on to me like to improve the conversion rate and like get people to actually download and use my device. And then ultimately they might pay for the application if they find value in it. But thinking that just releasing the application and you're done, that just won't do it. So plan some sort of marketing. There are different strategies that you can use. I know that many people currently use like TikTok. So influencers create videos about your application where they use them. I haven't been trying that out simply because I want to first like make sure the application is actually decent before I throw money at it. Just have this in mind that only because you release the application, it's not going to be a success. On top of that, I've now also added analytics to my application. I've been trying out different services and I will report on how it works and what I think is the best soon. Ben Award gave me this tip. By the way, check out our episode on the podcast, uh, on the Rocketship podcast, where we talked about his game Voidpad. And he told me to definitely add analytics so you see how people use and interact with your application and where they drop off. And so that gives you a clue of how you can improve your app. All right, the final tip, nothing is failure if you can learn from it. All my three applications don't really make any money compared to what I usually do, but they've been great fun to develop. I learned a lot about React Native in general, about Native Win, about the submission process and how to handle subscription elements. Although like they don't really have a lot of users yet, I'm still working on them. I'm getting better with ASO, so with App Store optimization. I'm trying to improve like ranking for keywords, trying different texts, changing the like visuals of the application on this store and now also with tracking trying to see how users use my app including session replays if like there's anything wrong with my apps but that's really the ultimate key of sticking to it you can't expect instant results you will also get a lot of knowledge with new tools and new frameworks you try out and you simply keep on iterating ultimately at the end of the day for me that's the fun of building and shipping native apps and overall that's just for me the the critical thing that i don't lose excitement about what i do all right so there you have it 10 lessons from someone who's been through it building apps is a journey and every developer's path is different but i hope these insights help you avoid some of the pitfalls that I've encountered. They won't make you an overnight millionaire, but maybe they can give you encouragement to start your own apps this year. It's fun. You learn so much from getting your hands dirty and eventually you might actually have a great idea and build a little fortune on the side. If you also want to build and ship your first React Native app in 2025, check out the new Zero to Hero mission on galaxies.dev slash missions, which just got the fifth module about push notifications.
notifications, in-app purchases, XP module and it's almost complete now. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more real world development insights. Oh, and drop a comment below with your own app development lesson. I love to hear them and your stories and why you got rejected by Apple. I'm open to share more about my journey this year, so let me know if you want more videos about it and I will do it. I'll catch you in the next one and until then, of course, happy coding, Simon.